Thank you for watching Healthy Food, Happy You. I'm Gina Lewis, your new host, and I am so excited about all this, the shows we have in store for you this year. Today's show is near and dear to my heart. It's about raising vegan children, and I'd love to introduce our awe-inspiring guests to you today. We have Amy Sharp and Addison, who is eight, and Lillian, who is six and a half, and they made a decision as a family two years ago to become vegan. And we have Maria McCorder and her daughter Mara, who is six and a half, and she's been vegan all her life. Maria made the decision to become vegan 16 and a half years ago. And Maria also blogs for chocolateandarugula.com. Thank you all so much for being here. This is my son, Waylon Lewis, and he is 17 months old, and he has also been vegan all his life. So I think we are going to let these kids run off and play. You made this life-changing decision to become vegan two years ago. What caused that change? What? Well, for us, it wasn't, um, it was a very gradual process um, in that after Addison was born, I needed to lose my baby weight. And so I, for the first time in my life, decided to really pay attention to what I was eating. Mm -hmm. And I realized at that point that um, if I were to eat um, meat and drink milk, that um, the calories wise, that it was just um, disallowing me from eating a lot of other foods. I was really having to limit myself. So at that point, um, we just started eating less and started eating more of a vegetarian diet. And uh, Dave and I did that, my husband and I did that together. And then um, as we progressed, um, there, there came a point where my son was actually having um, to use a nebulizer, he was having to use albuterol on a regular basis, had to come off the soccer field when he was playing soccer in order to use his inhaler um, because he couldn't, he couldn't breathe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've always been very careful about everything that we eat and what they're exposed to. And so I was very frustrated and started to just look online to see why he might be asthmatic. Like it didn't make sense to me just to have him medicated. Right. And so as I did my research, I came across an article by um, one of the pediatricians, I, I think it was actually the chief of pediatrics at the Johns Hopkins Institute, who um, had said that um, over 50% of American children are um, diagnosed or, or misdiagnosed um, who actually have a milk allergy. That's so true. And, um, and so we cut milk out of our diet. Mm. And um, it was, it was incredible. I mean, literally within two weeks, we noticed a difference because he, he has a lot of allergies anyhow, so he has a constant runny nose, but it was just such a big difference. Um, and, and when we did that, we didn't have to um, use any more medication. That we is were, amazing. We were basically done with it. Wow. And so it was our kind of miracle cure. But in doing that, in taking that step to cut milk out, it opened up this world of information where uh, we learned a lot about nutrition, we learned a lot more about where our food comes from, and it um, was almost immediately after that that um, we decided that we were going to be vegan because um, we didn't feel comfortable with any other yeah. path. Yeah, I think that's a theme with a lot of vegans. You hear that they started learning mm -hmm. about what they eat, and you find out a lot of information that's just unheard of, it's not talked about. Well, we don't learn about nutrition in school. We don't, we don't. You know, learn about where our food comes exactly. from. Exactly. So. And it's so good that you had the support of your husband mm -hmm. to back you up and, mm -hmm. and help the family too. And you became vegan 16 and a half years ago before you had children. What sparked that change? Um, mainly in college. I was in school about 20, 25 years ago. The ramen noodle day. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's and a good time to go vegan. It is a good time. You know, you're, you're, you know, just kind of questioning everything. Question, you know, I was very kind of politically involved and, you know, exploring issues about feminism and racism and homophobia uh -huh. and all these things. And so food was just another thing that I yeah. questioned. Although, uh, like Amy, I do have to give credit for my mother to my mother as well because she's always, always been relatively health conscious. 
so we didn't have the cookie jar. We had total cereal instead of Fruit Loops, and so she's already always had this kind of health consciousness. So yeah. it kind of um, con you know continued in college and. Um, my younger sister actually was uh, in school as well, and she heard a lecture uh, by Dick Gregory talking about um, the importance of being vegan. And so she was like, I heard this great lecture, we have to become vegan. And so we, you know, we started doing more research and you know, kind of did it you know, as a family as well. Yeah. Um, so we, it's, it's pretty much since college, been on this path from vegetarianism and then, and then veganism. Again, the theme of learning, mm -hmm. and I love that you both have that family support, that's so important and great to do as a family unit, brings you closer together. Aside from the huge change in Addison's breathing, and apparently you look fabulous, <laughs> so I'm sure that baby weight fell right off. What other changes did you notice switching to this diet? Well, um, it, it really provided an opportunity for us to talk with the kids about food. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and um, so it, it really, pushed us toward more thoughtful eating. And I think that's uh, something that I was, in, you know, when the children were babies and you're trying to figure out mm -hmm. what do you do in order to instill lifelong, you know, good habits. Mm -hmm. um, this was something that I really felt like it was a positive thing because they were going to learn just as much as I was learning. Because yeah, at, learn at the time, yeah, I mean, we were, we were basically on the same plane. That's so um, great. But, you know, aside from that, I mean, it, it really has been an opportunity to talk about the other aspects of it, too, and helping them to understand not just the food aspect of being vegan, but also the, um, you know, the other products that are uh, used that are, um, you know, subjecting animals to various forms of cruelty and, um, and also the, the impact to the environment as mm -hmm. a whole and really trying to help them to understand um, the the total impact on a on a more global scale of uh, what one person can do, what more people can do it, by making the, these kinds of changes in their daily choices. Absolutely, I think it's probably one of the biggest decisions you can make, and far-reaching decisions you can make in your entire life. And you being in college, did that help you through college? Were you able to study more, focus more, mm -hmm. have more energy? Um, let's see, it's been so long ago, uh -huh. <laughs> but um, I do, I do, it actually probably helped with the freshman 15. I think yes. I probably didn't yeah. get, getting, um, didn't gain the freshman 15 that, that uh, many other. Listen uh, up, freshmen. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> um, uh, but pro probably more so uh, post-college um, and just coming out and, and I think really being introduced to a larger kind of vegetarian and vegan community mm -hmm. because actually I came out in, in 1986 and then came back to Washington DC and then discovered that there actually was this really vibrant vegetarian and vegan community, community that existed in DC. So I think it kind of uh, you know opened my world to um, new people and new thinking. And, um, and also I think in many ways it kind of made me a foodie. I mean, I'd already loved food, but it also kind of introduced me to new foods. Because a lot of times, Absolutely. I mean, it's so interesting that people think that because you're a vegan, it actually limits your diet. But in fact, what I found is that it actually opens you up to more food because mm -hmm. you're, you know, you just, you generally tend to be more open to trying new things. Exactly. You know, what are avocados? What are dates? You know, what are, you know, these things that... Um, arugula. That, arugula, exactly. Yes. Um, so I think it, in, in many ways, turned me into a foodie. I started, you know, growing vegetables, going to farmer's markets, things like that. So let's talk about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned some of the stigmas that are and stereotypes mm. that are associated with being vegan. People don't, you know, a lot of people have this idea that you can't eat a lot of foods. What are some other things that just aren't true that you encounter? Right. Well, the, the one you can't live well, live healthily on a vegan diet, I think, is one myth. I think. Uh, I think also there's people see it as being in some ways kind of anti-social or anti-something, you it know, or just kind of weird and crazy. It is tough when you have a dinner crazy. party right. to go to. And right, yeah, and, that it, yeah, and that's, it's limiting and, and, you know, it's seen as fringe and, and things like that. And I mean, it, because I've been doing it for so long, I, it's, it's not even something that's really a part of my sure. thinking um, 
but um, I mean, I, you know, for people who are thinking about, and particularly when it comes to parenting, I mean, I think it's one thing to choose it as an individual and as an adult, mm -hmm. um, but it's another thing for to, you know, to, to, raise, to decide to raise your children that way. And so people really can get, um, can get worried and concerned about you making that decision for, you know, for Absolutely. your child. So with that, you had made this decision for your kids after they had been on a carnivorous diet. Mm -hmm. What kind, have you had any stereotypes or anything? That yeah, you've I mean, with that it, you know, I, I think there are people who think that it's just trendy, mm -hmm. you know, um, people who don't, um, who don't understand it. And for some very strange reason, um, you know, for me, I think a lot of it, and even for the children, you know, what they've expressed to me um, is that they're eager to share with people. They, they want um, people to understand um, why they're choosing to eat the way that they're eating. Right. And, um, and I, you know, am, am the same way. I'm sensitive to people. I'm not trying to kind of um, change the world. Right. But, um, but I, I am kind of eager to share that the health benefits and, mm -hmm. and really there's so much more to this, guys. But for, for some odd reason, people do tend to get offended without even really saying a word. Sure. <laughs> so um, that has been probably more challenging is um, just the, the notion of um, just trying to, um, you know, get people to not turn you off before you even start talking. Yeah, I think it's easy to be afraid of things that we don't understand. I know for me, I, I got the question all throughout my pregnancy, is my baby going to be okay with the diet that I'm going to be on? Mm -hmm. and, and is his weight okay? And as you can see, he is a healthy, rambunctious, perfectly on target, 17 mm -hmm. and a half month old. And, and with the pregnancy weight, I didn't gain as much through my pregnancy, but he was a healthy weight and had mm -hmm. all of his nutrition. So those stereotypes, they just, they aren't true. It, it's really an amazing, wonderful change. For me, I feel like it was the best decision I could do for my children. Back to your website, chocolateandarugula.com. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I love your play on words. <laughs> Chocolate, black, mm -hmm. and arugula, green. I want to read one of the posts that I, I read through your whole website, mm -hmm. by the way. And I found out about cycling and zip cars and just so many. It's a treasure. Thank you. One of your posts was written on 6 December 2009, and it actually says, stop going green. And when I saw that topic, I was like, oh no, what is she talking about? And you said, this is what Mike Tidwell, executive director of the Chesapeake Climate Action Network, advises in a Washington Post editorial today. He argues that going green is a largely ineffectual fad. Instead, we should be looking to the strategies and tactics employed by civil rights activists in the 1960s, appealing to morality in instituting laws. Mm -hmm. And I love that because, for one, I am largely excited by anything that helps people make the right decision. So call it a fad, whatever, just make the right decision. Mm -hmm. But you're right for a long-term change, and he's right, for a long-term change, you've got to appeal to the morals of our citizens. No, it's, it's definitely true. and. And I mean, with my blog, it, the, the play on the black and the green is what I'm principally interested in is, is the ways in which um, kind of being black, having a, you know, a, a quote unquote racial identity and being green, the ways in which they're similar and dissimilar. And in this instance, um, people who uh, advocate sustainability or going green are, do oftentimes look at you know, civil rights, mm -hmm. the civil rights movements and looking at those strategies and tactics to see what are the ways in which um, we can really affect change. And the, the similar thing with being vegan, obviously, is you know, that, you, know you were mentioning that people do see, can see it as trendy and as a fad, and people like go veg and they make it you know, something popular and, and fun and hip, which is important, but there are also you know, different organizations, obviously, that are also working toward actually changing laws. So you have Meatless Mondays that are instituted mm -hmm in cities and states mm -hmm. around the country, but instituting laws um, and pushing the ethics of it to try to make it a, a more deeper change. Sure. Mm -hmm.